Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Retro Pop Planet. Happy New Year and thank you guys. We did it. We hit 1,000 subscribers on the channel in the first week of the year. So I want to thank everybody that helped me get there. That was my stretch goal on the year and we did it. So now let's start off on a bit of a bummer note. First of all, I started the year off sick, so I haven't really been able to produce that much in the way of videos. And I wanted to put this video out. You see, back in December before the holidays, I was reading a local article somewhere and I realized that a local restaurant fast food institution is shutting its doors after like 40 years. And as of the release of this video, it is now completely gone. Now the restaurant I am talking about today is Ollie's Trolley, which was located in DC. And it was in the complex with a very famous hotel, uh, the Hotel Harrington. And from what I've read, the original owner passed away some time ago and then his son or a family member also passed away and the company just unloaded this entire block. So it looks to be like it's gonna be completely completely redeveloped. Two restaurants were actually closed. Uh, Harry's, which was a bar, kind of a dive bar. And then Ollie's Trolley, which originally started off as a regional restaurant chain. It's a burger joint that specialized in a number of different ingredients. I'm not gonna do the entire backstory on this video because what I'm showing you today was actually meant originally as part of a much larger video and then I was going to do a separate little video on Ollie's Trolley. Long story short, Oliver Glyken House was a Florida-based restaurateur operating a sandwich shop in Miami Beach, Florida. He created a signature Ollie burger in the 1930s, which had a secret blend of some 23-odd herbs and spices. By all accounts, he was a real character. To cut to the chase, he was a real pain in the ass and would regularly curse out his diners for making special requests, like adding ketchup to his burgers. The same guy that purchased Kentucky Fried Chicken from Harlan Sanders in 1964, a John Brown Jr., was looking for a new opportunity after selling off that franchise in 1971. He purchased the struggling restaurant group Lums and instantly started seeking ways to increase brand revenue. He purchased the recipe for the Ollie Burger and Ollie Fries from Glycan House and incorporated it into Lum's restaurants. Around the same time, he came up with a unique trolley car concept for patrons seeking a walk-up dining experience. Thus, Ollie's Trolleys was formed. They expanded quickly in the 1970s, but ultimately weren't that successful for a number of reasons. This location was the last standalone Ollie's brick and mortar restaurant. Supposedly, there are still two trolley car restaurants in operation out there. So the one thing that I wanted to note is that this video is not going to be very long. This was a lot of just sort of like B-roll footage that I was taking. Now I do have a lot of memories of Ollie's. Uh, this particular location, uh, I remember when we first moved here, uh, my mom worked nearby and so we would actually go here as sort of a special treat. I will note that when I actually worked downtown, I worked just a couple blocks away. This was not a place that we always went. Uh, first of all, we we weren't getting burgers and fries all the time. But also the one thing that made this Ollie's unique is that they never accepted credit cards. And in fact, even on this particular trip, I didn't have enough cash. So another person waiting in line actually gifted me a dollar. So thank you for whoever you were for giving me that extra dollar. And so it was always a little bit of a pain in the butt, especially if you were there with larger families, uh, you would have had to have cash for everybody. So the one location that I do remember going and Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe in the downstairs eating hall at Union Station also had an Ollie's. And I remember eating there more than the one that was down on 12th Street. So back in August, when I was rehabbing my ankle, I took a trip to DC and I covered a bunch of filming locations, some which I put out several months ago. And on that day, I actually went to Ollie's to record for this other video. And just because I was wanting Ollie's, not knowing that it was gonna be my last time probably ever going to one. So I put this little video montage for you, not knowing that this might be archival footage someday. Uh, I will note that the restaurant had seemed to be kind of sparse and that is because a lot of the 
ephemera, the, the tchotchkes, the vintage stuff that had been collected by the owner for so long actually had been auctioned off and, and was auctioned off most of this past fall. So let's go and check out my footage from Ollie's Trolley. I made it to Ollie's Trolley in Washington, a Washington landmark. There's only a few of these left in existence and they were a franchise, but now they're individually owned and operated and they share spiritual DNA with Lums. And you can still get fries and you can get the Ollie Burger, which they sold at Lums. I need to slow down some of my footage so you can view it better. But I also need to mute the audio because the radio was blasting inside. So I ordered the straight up Ollie burger and fries. Ollie himself would have rung me up and thrown me out if he would see how I ordered my burger. I asked for medium to medium well because that's how I like it. Uh, and a little secret, I actually prefer well done for those of you that haven't clicked off the video by now. And Ollie was a medium rare guy. The clerk also misheard my order and instead of placing the ketchup on the side, she put it on top of the special Ollie sauce. It didn't kill the taste, but wasn't quite right. Oh, and the fries, yeah, they're glorious. All right, I haven't had one of these in so long. I'm looking forward to it. So let's get into these French fries. It's got that 26 season, I think is what they advertise. And then of course the Ollie Burger, which they served at Lungs. That's very good, just like I remember them. All right guys, welcome back. Uh, what did I tell you, a little bit of a bummer. The one thing I will note again about that burger is that is not the way I had intended it to, to be. The, the server that was taking my order misunderstood me. I actually asked for ketchup and mustard on the side and unfortunately they put the ketchup on top of the burger as well as their special sauce which is basically another variation of thousand island dressing and of course the fries I, I love the fries there you know they're cooked to order because i actually had like two or three fries that were completely undercooked they were actually raw potato that they were actually fried not from frozen but they had been made fresh in house so i'm super bummed that it's gone and i did read that the owner still retains the rights to it so he had been looking for a new space, so hopefully it'll pop up somewhere else in the city. I hope it's not gone for good. If you like this video, please give it a like. Please feel free to hit that subscribe button. Um, I will be doing a video that will encapsulate this one later on down the road, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys in the next video.